Uh, good afternoon. Steve, Dave, and I met with Pat Shermer uh, early this morning and informed him that we're making a change uh, at our head coaching position. And we believe that we have to move in another direction. In the NFL, every season, 31 teams fall short of their ultimate goal. For the Giants, 2019 was a trying year, defined by heartbreak and disappointment. When expectations aren't met, transition follows. And that's the path Big Blue is taking in 2020, as it looks to add a new chapter to the rich history of the organization. In order to accomplish that feat, the coaching staff isn't the only facet being tweaked. We've had a lot of turnover in our scouting area. We've completely changed our grading system. We're deeper into analytics and technology than we've ever been before, and that process is ongoing. The point I'm trying to make is it's not business as usual here at the Giants. We've made a lot of changes. We need to give it a chance to see if it's going to succeed or not. And if that process is to be accelerated, it starts with the roster, where the nucleus is already in place. When you look at this job, they have a lot of good young talent in the quarterback, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram. Look, they have a lot of pieces there. You could attract a great coach, and we think you could work with Dave Gettleman. We'd like you to give that a chance. Okay. Where's the one of us we on the other platform? Of, yeah, the, the, it's in there. Keep going. Oh, that's yes. not clear. Hold on. Let's wait till we find the clear ones. Hold on. There we go. So you probably don't. To be able to get to that last game and to be able to win that last game is something very special. You know, a lot of times people miss the players and coaches' families, how much they go through and how much sacrifice they put in throughout the year and how much time you spend away and hours you spend away. So when the season's over and you can celebrate that, it's a feeling you can't describe, you know. You can figure LS6. She's been to five, four, four. Super Bowls. Four. And six years old. So quite a lot. It's crazy. Yep. And then he's 11, been to two national championships and four Super Bowls. So it's pretty crazy. It's been a cool adventure. Look, you take a chance with everything you do. Like Amber said, I took a grad assistant spot for $700 a month. Didn't even cover the rent. We found a way to squeak that out and make that work. You know, every opportunity that came my way, you just look at it as a challenge. And uh, you look for a way to prove people wrong and that'll open more doors for you. And this right here is an, a heck of an opportunity that I'm not gonna squander. I'm gonna come to New York, I'm gonna work my butt off every day, I'm gonna make sure everyone on the team does the same. And there's 32 teams in this league, but they're not all the same. And the Giants definitely have the history and the tradition with them. They've got a great city with tremendous fans. You know, and I think the team has to reflect the city. It's gotta be a blue collar, hard nosed, tough team. So the people in the city who watch them can be proud of it. And they've gotta see themselves in the team. And that's what we look to do this year. And I'm very excited to get on that plane tomorrow and go on down to New York and, and get this thing started. The Giants are finalizing a deal with Patriots wide receiver and special teams coach Joe Judge. The G-Men have found their man. Three years under Nick Saban, eight years under Bill Belichick. Yeah. Is he head coach material? Certainly. But a very respected coach and someone Bill Belichick has fought for to get respect enough to be a head coach in the NFL. Uh, on behalf of the Mara and Tisch families, I'm very pleased to introduce Joe Judge as the new head coach of the New York Giants. We're going to put a product on the field that the people of this city and region will be proud of because this team will represent this area. We will play fast, we'll play downhill, we'll play aggressive. We'll punch you in the nose for 60 minutes, we'll play every play like it is a history and a life of its own with a relentless competitive attitude. You're in a position, earn it. Earn it every day, okay? And I appreciate the opportunity. I'm working every day to earn it. I had a lot of first impressions, and most people think there's only one first impression. I had many first impressions. His intelligence, his focus, his dedication, his commitment, his leadership qualities, the players are going to love him. He's going to put a great staff together. I think the fans are really going to see a very dynamic, powerful, passionate leader. It's very, very exciting. He's coached under and learned from two of the iconic current coaches. He's won five championships in 10 years. The wealth of information that he had, where he'd been, this is a tough man's game. And that's something that Joe will bring. Joe will bring, help us get back that edge of toughness. Those characteristics don't just apply to the 53-man roster. A successful team is a product of the entire organization, 
one which focuses on fundamentals on and off the field, something the new coach made very clear during his first day on the job. We have one mission, winning games. That's it. That's it. That starts with you. Meeting efficiency, communication, making sure we eliminate problems before they become a big issue. Everybody has a role in this organization. We respect each other's role, and we'll execute our job. Whatever your job is, it is significant. I want to know everybody in here's story. I want to know your names. I know your families. I want to know what motivates you. We're in a profession. A paycheck does not eliminate the personal aspect of what we do. This is a football team, okay? Whether you have a son that plays in Pee Wee and high school, okay, or you're a professional, the same principles will direct us to winning games on all levels. The same things that are successful on the field will be successful in the business aspect and in the classrooms. And we have to make sure we get those fundamentals right. There's not going to be a grand scheme. We're not going to win a Super Bowl trophy tomorrow. Has everybody got that? We'll take one step forward every day. We'll win that day. We'll execute our assignments. And the little steps will become the big picture. Thank you for your time. Okay. You know, I haven't had a chance to get a lot around town. I've been very busy in the office and busy getting guys in here to work on the staff. But the few times I've been out, there's been a tremendous amount of support around town, a lot of excitement, and, uh, you know, I'm just proud to be part of it. You know, I talked to my press conference and I meant it. I want to take my time, put together a good staff. I want to find good people who care about the players. I know we've done that. I want to find great teachers. I know we've done that. And I want to find guys with different types of energy to bring to the building and bring different types of life to, you know, really reach every guy on the team, get the most out of them. And I believe we've done that as well. So I'll tell you what, we've got them in here recently, the last couple of weeks. There's definitely a different energy in the building. It's great having them in here. We're having a lot of fun working and going forward, getting a whole lot done. And it's been exciting so far. It's one building, it's one mission. So we're working hand in hand with the scouts every day. You know, they see something they tell us, we communicate with them what we need. You know, at this point right now, we just got done evaluating our roster as a complete staff and going through it with everybody in the building. You know, at this point, we'll transition over into free agency prep and, and look into the college, you know, with the combine coming up. But look, we're all in the same building, we're on the same floor. We're working, interacting at all times throughout the day together. We're meeting together. Um, it's been great so far. You know, I'm looking forward to going forward with these guys. The NFL offseason is a process. And for about the last 70 years, there's only one place that has signaled the start of this marathon in January. Mobile, Alabama, the site of the annual Senior Bowl. Representatives from all 32 teams congregate in the Port City to get an up-close and personal view of some of the nation's best college football players. It's a tradition the Giants have relied on. And 2020 is providing yet another opportunity for the scouting department to solidify its observations from the regular season. This is my 16th Senior Bowl. 15 full-time, one year as an intern. I really enjoy it to sit in the stands and just, you know, a player from the SEC does something, I can ask our Southeast scout, you know, someone from out west does something, I'll talk to our West Coast scout, and just hear their opinion, you know. This business of ours is all about, it's your opinion, you know, it's, um, we get judged on our opinion, so it's good to hear their thought process and sit there live with them, you know, and kind of see what they're seeing. Last year, you know, we were a little heavily focused on the quarterbacks. DJ, you know, I'd seen him play live twice last fall, but to see him, you know, down here again in a different venue, there were some things that we picked up from the game that really confirmed our beliefs that he could be a franchise quarterback. Oh, that was a roll. Oh, he's, he's everything you want. He's outstanding. Back to throw, steps up, he's gonna run. Jones to the five, touchdown Giants! Daniel Jones on a seven yard run! He didn't listen. For a million reasons, Daniel was the right guy. Offense on one end, defense on the other. All right, let's watch these skill guys. 
Well, that was a nice catch. 14, heck of a catch. Whoops. He's staring him right down, isn't he? Big gloves, good arm length. That's a long man. Oh, whoa, whoa, it's a great catch. Really the best part about coming down here is getting to know the players off the field. And we spent a lot of time interviewing these guys. And is he encouraging his teammates that he just met a couple days ago? Is he competing to the whistle in every drill out here? That's the stuff that, you know, that can add to his evaluation that we've already done in the fall uh, that can increase his value for us. One player who met that criteria, the Giants' 2019 third round pick. Oh, Shane Zeminis. You saw the competitiveness, especially out of X and toughness. And what X did, he got better throughout the week. A small school guy took steps throughout the week to improve, and we love that. And, and then they think they did that this year for us on Sundays. And Wentz can't survive that. Tried to duck under it. The rookie Zimenez with the second sack of the night for New York. Well, I was the first person from my school to be invited to the Senior Bowl. So, you know, getting that letter in the mail, it was one of the films I'm never going to forget because, you know, that's something I, I watched throughout my entire college career. And just, it was a dream of mine. And finally getting that invite, it meant everything to me, and I'm never going to forget it. OU's a smaller program, so coming there, it was kind of like a, a little bit new just to see all those cameras and all these people interested in me. But, you know, I feel like I did a pretty, pretty good job handling it. What do you want to show when you go up against some of those big conference guys? I just want to show them teams what kind of player I am, what kind of player they'll be getting day in and day out, and how hard I practice and how important it is to me to practice. Every NFL team is there and all the eyes are on you. It's your time to, to get the attention of what you've been waiting for your entire life. So, you know, it's just you got three days to show everybody what you got and you got to do something to stand out. The most valuable parts of the Senior Bowl, the practices, you know, we really love to see the one-on-ones, to see the competitiveness, the athletic ability, the speed, and you really, you just get to see that that competitiveness really shows out in those uh, situations. Everybody that's there the entire practice is there to see the one-on-one -on -one pass rush drill, so like as soon as the period blows, you walk down there, it's like everybody just shifts towards the one-on-one -on -one drills, and it's like all eyes on the O-line versus the D-line. We're one-on-one -on -one here, huh? Look at that, like in the old days, everybody getting circling up. They're gonna show everybody how tough they are. Put that right on. Tough, 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 what we need. You know, I feel like I, I held my own against everybody, and I feel like I got the best of some people as well, you know what I'm saying? So it was just football, you know, I went out there and competed at a high level, and I was satisfied with what I did. We always feel pressure. Uh, we always want to provide our coaching staff and our organization players to win. We haven't done that. We haven't won enough games in the last couple years for our fans. So there's always pressure on us. But every, every senior bowl is treated the same way, of finding tough, smart, um, fast, competitive football players. Hey Giants fans, Saquon Barkley here. If you want to see more videos, subscribe below.